Hi, my name is Nate, and in this video I'm going to show how to make a run animation using Spine. We're going to assume you already have your character with the pieces on separate layers in Photoshop, and you run the Photoshop export script that comes with Spine. Doing that looks like this. Go to File, Scripts, Browse, choose Layers to PNG, check Save JSON and Save PNGs, set the image scale, and click OK. What that will do is it will write each of the layers as an individual PNG file that's trimmed, and it will create a JSON data file. So in the description below this video, you'll find a link to a zip file that contains those images and this JSON file, as well as a project that we'll use in Spine to help us build the run animation. So to get started, we'll go ahead and open the diagram project in Spine. It appears to be blank, but there's actually a skeleton in the tree that's hidden that we'll use later. For now, go to Import Data and choose the JSON file. You can name your skeleton, hit OK, and it imports the images in the same positions that they were in Photoshop, which saves a lot of time. The images can't be found, so go to the Images node in the tree, set the path to images, and now Spine can find the images. Let's use the translate tool to move all of the images so that he's standing at zero, zero. Okay, so now we have all of the images attached to the root bone. We just need to draw our bones and then we can animate. So to start, let's rename the, the root bone to hip. And we want to move this to his hip. If we try to move it, all of the images move because they're attached. So we can turn on image compensation. This allows us to move a bone without the attached images moving. Make sure you turn it off when you're done. And now we'll use the create tool to, to draw the bones. There's a few ways to do this. The simple way is click and drag to draw a bone. This creates a new bone called bone, which you would then need to rename. And then you would find the image that you want on that bone and you drag it there and you'd move to the next bone. But this is a bit slow, there's a better way. So using the Create tool, choose the bone to be the parent, which will be the hip, and then click and drag, but don't let go of the mouse. So while you're dragging the bone, hold Shift, which causes images under the mouse to be highlighted. So highlight the image that you want attached to this bone, and let go of Shift, but don't let go of the mouse, and that's the trick. So I'm still dragging the bone, but the image remains highlighted. Finish dragging the bone, and you'll see that the bone was created with the name of the image that was chosen, and the image was placed under the bone. So that saves a lot of steps. Um, we'll go ahead and do the rest of the skeleton. So choose the image that will be the parent. Click and drag. Shift to select the image. Finish. And we'll just do that for the rest. When you, when you want to draw the next leg, you need to click the hip because that will be the parent. And it's hard to see the leg, so you can hold shift just to see the images so that you know where to draw the bones. We'll draw the torso, which will be a child of the hip, then the neck, then the head. If you don't like how a bone looks, you can hold Alt and draw it again. That will replace the selected bone when you hold Alt. Now we want to draw the front arm, so we select the torso. The lower arm and the hand. The back arm's hard to see, but it's there. Lower arm and the hand. So now we've, we've attached all of the images to bones except for these few. So we need to attach these. The eye goes to the head bone. You click set parent, choose the bone. You can also press P and then choose the bone. The mouth goes to the head. You can also drag in the tree to the head. The gun should be attached to the hand which is hard to see. So now that we're done, we can test out 
that our bones are correct by using the pose tool. Make sure that only the bones that we want move. So this back arm is parented to the wrong bone. So we need to move this to the torso. And the head's okay. Okay. What we'll do now is select the back leg and the back arm and click color and change the color of the bones so that they're more distinct so that you can tell the back leg and arm from the front leg and arm. And also to help us with animating, we'll set up some selection groups. So choose the root and press control one, torso control two, the neck and head is control three, the front arm without the hand will be control four, and the back arm, control five, front leg is control six, and the back leg is control seven. That lets us press the numbers one through seven to select those same bones. So now we are ready to animate, and we will switch from setup mode to animate mode by clicking here. So the first thing we do is select all of the bones and key rotate and translate. Next, what we'll do is for frame zero, we're going to set a, a major pose. And for frame one, we'll set the next major pose without worrying about timing. And we'll continue doing that till we have our whole animation done. Then later we can come back and move the major poses around to adjust the timing and add in between poses, which makes for a pretty convenient workflow. To help us out, we can show the diagram skeleton, and you'll see an image in the background. There are 12 of these images, which make up the major poses for our run cycle. And the 12th frame is the same as the first frame. So what we'll do is go to frame 0, press 1 to get the root bone, and translate it so that Spine Boy moves out of the way. What you want to do is match Spine Boy's hip with the diagram's hip, then press 2 for the torso, choose the pose tool, and adjust the torso. 3 for the head, 4 for the front arm, continue doing this all the way to 7. The front arm is white, and the back arm is black, so make sure those are not confused. Same with the leg, the front leg is white. And the back leg is black. Once you have the pose matched, you'll see in the tree that all of the bones that were edited have a yellow dot. That means that they have been changed but not keyed. You can press K. This will key all edited bones. Uh, and once you do that, it's saved. The pose is saved at this frame. If you were to scrub the timeline without doing that, you'd lose your pose. So make sure you do that. You can also turn on auto key. This will save a key every time you make any change, so we'll leave that on for now. Go to the next frame and do the same thing. So select the root. When you right click, it toggles between the current tool and the last tool you've used. And since we use tr translate and, and pose a lot, that's, that's very convenient. So translate him out of the way to find the root, the hip. Press 2 for the torso for the head, front leg is white, we don't want the feet to go through the floor, and the back leg. So continue doing this for each of the frames all the way to 11. I've gone ahead and jumped to having all 11 frames done. You can jump to this position by opening diagram complete one. So we have first 11 frames. What we'll do next, open the dope sheet, select frame zero, copy to frame 12. 
This, this makes our run animation a loop. And then we want to box select and drag the edge of the selection so that our animation is 24 frames long. And this happens to give us a nice timing for this particular animation. We can hide the diagram because it's no longer needed. And our animation is pretty good. You can slow down playback to see it better. Um, you might notice there's a couple problems. The first is that the, the hip is very um, mechanical. It goes linearly up and down. So let's look at fixing that. These are the keys for the hip. When the hip is selected, the dope sheet shows only those keys. We want to find the position where the hip is down and it goes up. So that looks like between 4 and 8. And then from 8 to 12, it goes down. So to make it easier to set a curve on this motion, we can delete the key at 6 and the key at 10. The same is true later in the animation. At 16, it's down. At 20, it's up. So we can delete 18 and 22. Now what we'll do is select the keys just before it moves up, open the graph, change it to a curve, and we want it to go fast and then slow. So we set the curve like this. Then the keys just before it goes down, we want it to go slow and then fast. So once we've done that, you can see in the animation he goes up quickly and then stays up there longer and that gives a much better bouncy feel. The next problem we'll fix is that the feet go through the ground, which is very common for run animation, and it can be a pain to fix. So the way we'll fix it is when the feet go through the ground, we will change the speed that the hip moves so that the hip isn't pushing the foot through the ground. So to do that, select the hip so that the dope sheet shows the keys for the hip and find the first frame the, that a foot goes through the ground. You'll notice that the frames that we created, the foot doesn't go through the ground. But the frames in between do. So if you hold shift, you can see all of the frames that go through the ground. And it's always in between our frames. So select the translate key for the hip just before the problematic frame, then change to the problematic frame. We're going to set the, the hip motion to be a curve, and we can adjust the speed of the hip now so that the foot isn't pushed through the ground. Um, we want to find the frame that is before the problem and move it, well, the, we want to find the frame that is the furthest off the ground and then move it up to give more room. And we can rotate the foot on the problem frame. And now the foot no longer goes through the ground. So if we'll repeat that again for this, this part where it goes through the ground. So again, select the key before the problem, go to the problem frame. Well, first go to the frame where it's the foot is furthest off the ground, translate the hip up as much as possible, then go to the translate key for the hip before the problem, go to the problem frame, change the curve on the hip, and change the rotation on the foot. Hold shift so that you can preview it, and we no longer have a problem there. So let's find the next place where we go through the ground. That's here. Select the hip. So between 12 and 14. So find the frame that is furthest off the ground. Translate it up a bit to give us some room. Select the translate key. Go to the problem frame. Change the curve on the hip. And change the rotation on the foot. Adjust this a little more. Okay, and the next place it goes through the ground is here. So same story. 
find the frame that is almost off the ground and move it up as much as possible to make room. Click the, the key before the problem frame, go to the problem frame, change the curve on the hip so that we move it up and adjust the rotation on the foot. And that's it for our fixing the feet going through the ground no longer happens. We did it by adjusting the speed of the hip. So this is the animation in slow motion. And at full speed. So it's looking pretty good. Hopefully this helps you with your run animations. Um, if, your, if your character doesn't match the dimensions of, of the diagrams, then you might have to improvise a bit, but the the, basic, the basics are the same for any run animation. It will be similar to this. Uh, obviously, more can be done to clean this up and, and make it a bit nicer. Um, but this is a, a good foundation, I hope, uh, to help you guys with your run animations. And that's all for now. <laughs>